Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we have kind of like an intermediate tutorial. This is like, it's not going super deep into the advanced topics, but it's something that everybody that works with raycasting needs. Um, so this is going to be mainly focused on raycasting, but I have a couple um, non data pack tricks to show that I think are useful, but I'm going to be showing them later in the video, aka after that way. Um, the important stuff gets set first, so I don't forget it. Anyways, so we're basically going to be working on how to detect when you hit something um, in a raycast. So when you shoot a raycast line, the line travels directly in the direction you're facing. And when it hits something, it will stop and you want it to actually detect when it hits that um, or whatever it does hit. So I'm going to pop into a data pack and I'm going to assume you know how to make data packs. And I can, I'm going to also assume that you kind of are familiar with how raycasting works. So we're gonna go into hitboxes. And again, this, um, one thing to note is this doesn't have to be used for raycasting. You can use hitboxes on anywhere. Um, it's just raycasting is the best application of it. It makes the most sense to use it in raycasting. So we're gonna hop into Ray and close some other things and delete all this. Okay, so we have a fresh function file. Now, as you might know with raycasting, you just do execute positioned caret 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 one run function and then you have to play the one that you're in so hitboxes slash ray and that would be how you do a basic ray cast with uh, no complexity added and this would just travel until it reaches the edge of the world or play 65 535 commands uh, probably hits the edge of your loading render chunks first but uh, it depends on how big your render distance is anyway so now to see what's going on we're going to add a particle called end rod because i think it's kind of cool or maybe crit crit is the one that i prefer honestly and we're only going to make one of them stationary. So now we're going to reload and we need some way to trigger this. You could put it in a main function, but I'm going to just use a command block for the hell of it, because why not? Um, so we're just going to do execute at, at a run function test hitboxes ray. And once I play that, uh, I'm going to lag, but you're going to see this ray coming out of my feet. So now we're going to have to see this to make it out of your eyes you have to do anchored eyes and just like that you're starting to uh, uh let's see anchored eyes okay let's go ahead and add an as at a because it probably is thinking uh yes there you go it needs to be as because the anchor deals with the command player's eyes uh, okay, so this is now shooting something out of my eyes and this video is already demonetized. All right, um, so we want to advance this. So first off, we want to say if block air. So if the block it's going to go into is air, then play it. And doing this will make it a lot faster uh, and less laggy, especially if I look down because it'll just stop and not go through the ground. Okay, so now we're going to deal with the actual hitboxes. So we need to actually detect something. Um, so there's a couple cool, efficient ways to do this that I've learned and through the, through the years. Um, but we're going to cover the first, which is the most powerful hitbox. So this is execute as at e dx equals zero. So dx equals zero sees when you have interacted with an entity's actual hitbox, not, uh, not the same as distance. So I'm going to briefly talk about that. So distance, when you use distance, it's kind of like uh, it picks in a radius, like a spherical radius, and it tries to select the entity that is in the radius based off of their origin. My origin is right at my feet. Now, DX is seeing if something is within that many blocks in the X direction. If you say DX equals zero, you're just checking if something is in this block here. Uh, if I was to play it right here, it would just say, is somebody in this block here, DX equals zero. Um, but the trick to this is that it, when it is checking if somebody's in the block, it bases it on their actual hitbox. So if my arm is in the block, it will probably trigger because um, it's ba my hitbox is my arm. So it's different from distance. Now, since we've picked one and we're saying as, um, so now it, the person, when we, anytime later that we say at S, you're referring to this entity that it found inside the hitbox. So now you're going to, oh, now you're going to say positioned 
negative 0 0.99, negative 0 0.99, negative 0 0.99. And you can change this to be more accurate. 0 0.99 is going to be like a pretty accurate box here around the player. But if you did like 0 0.7, you're going to give some cushion room to detect whatever this entity is, which you might want to do for some kind of a PVE scenario. You usually want to have a bigger hitbox. Okay, so you're moving. So we're saying, okay, we saw something in this square. Now we're going to move backwards like back here into this square. Okay, and then you say if entity at s dx equals zero. Okay, so now you're saying if are you still in the square? If you're still in the square, then you have hit their hitbox because it's within that 0 0.01 uh, range. So you basically say, did I hit the hitbox? All right, now let's move back and do the same selection. And if the two selections overlap, then like if it finds them in both, then that you can say you hit it. So we're going to do effect give at s glowing one okay and now the last thing that we need to do here is also specify type equals not player and once we do that now we can start to actually test our hitbox to see how good it is so we just want to add one more thing here so we're going to put this in here and we're going to do effect at e uh, effect clear at e glowing so now anytime something's not in the range it will just turn it off so i'm going to summon an armor stand type reload and let's test this so you can see as soon as i hit the armor stand it starts glowing and this crit particle starts to get in the way because it's so big but you can see that it works with the actual hitbox if i hit the right at the at right when i get towards the center and uh, armor stands are kind of weird like that um, but if we go ahead and trap a villager somehow with some fence, it's better. But armor stands are kind of weird. They're their own. Their hitboxes are strange. So summon villager. And you're going to see just how accurate this is. As soon as oh, the fence is in the way. As soon as I look at his actual hitbox, like even just his arm, it'll trigger pretty much. Um, of course, certain parts of the actual model are not considered part of the hitbox, but uh, it's beside the point. This is a very accurate hitbox and it works for any size. It works for spiders. It works for anything. So that's, this one is super useful. But what I like to do is actually actually like to do a conjoined system because, again, sometimes you want to detect if you specifically hit the head. Um, so let's go ahead and do two things. So first, this is a part of the efficiency stage. So this hitbox detection lets you see if you're roughly over on top of the entity, right? But now you can do play a separate function. So this will keep your raycast command having minimal commands in it. It only has three, um, which is pretty good. That's going to be very efficient. So we're going to do hit boxes slash hit. And then you're going to say test. Um, and then another thing to do is you can do unless entity at e tag equals. Uh, well, I wouldn't do that. I'll, I'll go over stopping the ray later. Um, but it, it's uh, there's some efficient ways to stop it. So let's go into hit. And now we know that we hit something and we know we're positioned back here. So let's go ahead and position back to where our cursor is. Right. Let's just like let's just fix it. We're basically just canceling out these two commands. Um, so now we're back where the trigger thingy hit it, where the raycast hit it. So now you can start to detect like if you hit the head. So it, these kind of hitboxes are more dependent on um, like you fine tuning things and then they also are mob dependent so the other one is good for general but if you want to detect like specifically where you hit something like the head and stuff uh, then you need it for specific types of mobs so like zombies uh, have a different location than spiders and stuff like that okay so just for you guys I decided to pull this out because I'm kind of close on time so let's just say type equals villager you can create like a entity tag type um, i did here i called it target and that's anything that you're allowed to hit um, and then we're just going to say uh, so this has three different modes so if you go to the since we're using distance the origin is at its feet right so we have to position our cursor down 1.7 see if we see its feet within a radius of 0 0.35 if we do then we have hit the head so let's imagine that uh, let me disable this let's imagine that it lands right here we're going down 1.7 that's pretty far down that's pretty close to the feet do we see the feet 
Yes. Now let's imagine we hit its arms. 1.7 is going to be below the ground, so it won't be close to the feet. So it's kind of like you're shifting everything down and then seeing if you're still hitting the entity after shifting. Um, so let's go ahead and just use the head one. But you can see what these values are. This is good for head, body, legs. But um, they're not perfect. Uh, so let's go ahead and do uh, effect give at s glowing one one true okay and then let's go ahead and throw on a stopping condition because some people find this confusing or difficult we're just going to do scoreboard players set range at s range zero and we're going to add a range condition if score at s range matches one and then we're going to remove one range per iteration uh it can't be at s because at s is the entity we'll just do at p for now but you can figure out how to make it multiplayer friendly by tagging people before they play the raycast um so we're just going to again go ahead and add one of these here and add one of these there and then scoreboard players set at a range 100. there is a scoreboard called range so when i hit reload you're gonna see that my cursor does not quite go as far and I can mess with this value to say, say 20, and it'll only go 20 blocks. So you can actually see the end there, kind of. And now you can see, uh, phew, I hate these fences. Let's just go ahead and get rid of them. So you can see nothing happens until I kind of reach his head. You can see him start glowing when I'm looking at his head. Um, but again, like there's some issues with this air thing, uh, and it's not like perfect. So, but you can see when I hit his head roughly, it will start glowing within a certain range and it will actually stop after it hits his head so you'll see it's hard for me to show this but since the range gets set to zero it kind of stops the cursor after it hits him um let's see yeah you can kind of see it's not going through him anyways so that's pretty much it you can mess with some of the values um you can mess with the uh, 0.35 to make it more or less easier to detect and you mess with the 1.7 again as well at the same time uh, and then you also can mess with these 0.99 values to make it a bigger or smaller regular hitbox so that's the video on hitboxes i'm not going to cover really anything else uh, it's mainly just this fine tune and then using this glowing effect really helps you figure out where your hitbox is and how it works of course you'd want to do data merge entity yeah, e type equals villager limit equals one no ai there you go so i don't want him to move so yeah you can really like kind of tune and see where your hitbox is uh so this is just what i found to be useful for mine but you can figure out for yourself what yours is uh and then another trick is to change this value so it's more accurate so if i change that to 0 0.5 it does more checks which means more particles which means better chance of hitting inside the box anyways that's pretty much it guys uh thanks for watching hopefully you found this useful i'm not going to have a download in the description so just go ahead and copy stuff uh phew, i guess one last thing that i want that i will show you okay so i put this command in here it's a kind of like rearrangement of a previous thing i covered as try to check if you're looking at something um and basically it's does everything we just did but slightly less accurate in only one command um, so I pasted it in the description. It's really interesting, but uh, it basically does a selection within a cone of the player, um, but with only one command by checking if you're looking at the entity, but limiting you to a certain distance. So if I do this, it will start glowing him uh, once I activate that. Yeah, it'll start glowing when I look at them. So this is like a, I don't know how to use data packs kind of trick, um, but it's not perfect and you have to tinker with the conic selection, but it's pretty cool. Um, you can mess with, I believe it's this value here in conjunction with this value here to change how, mainly the distance value here to change how wide the um, selection range is. Um, so I have it tuned here to be pretty tight, but it's kind of interesting that it's able to work. Anyways, other than that, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.